Madam Secretary, Director McLaughlin, ladies and gentlemen, our dad loved science. He loved teaching. He was a natural teacher. And there was no better teacher than Chief, as he was lovingly called by his family, some of whom are here today. I can tell you the Brzezinski kids feel a special kinship with my dad's size students because family dinners at home were like seminars, <laughs> hard seminars. We kids were grilled. I remember one dinner when I had to defend Salt too, and I was about nine years old. <laughs> but we learned so much. As a teacher, my dad was a consummate storyteller, and he was able to translate his big life into lessons that anyone could understand. Whether it was his role in normalization of relations with China and agreeing to disagree in <clears throat> the way he found common ground with Deng Xiaoping, or returning the Panama Canal to eliminate paternalism in our relationship with Latin America. He was involved in extraordinary events, and his teaching would draw on those events in a fascinating way. I took a look at my dad's diaries to see what he was doing on exactly this day 40 years ago, on September 17, 1978, right in the middle of the Carter administration. His memoirs, which Madeleine Albright helped shape, revealed that on this very day in 1978, my father, President Carter, Vice President Mondale, Secretary of State Vance, were huddled at Camp David with Israel's Prime Minister Menachem Begin and an Arab President Anwar Sadat of Egypt. That evening, exactly 40 years ago, my father recorded the following. After a long evening session with Begin, it is beginning to look good. We might get a compromise agreement today, though the burden of it will fall on Sadat's shoulders. It will be hard for him to justify it. Of course, that was the Camp David Accords, which laid the groundwork for an Egyptian-Israeli peace treaty, the first ever agreement between an Arab state and Israel, and the longest lasting peace agreement in the history of the Middle East. And I think that that's so incredible, because we're at a time when people can't see past their differences. The Camp David negotiations were the epitome of people doing exactly that, a Likud prime minister and an Arab president, my dad, helped President Carter convene them, not <coughs> over their differing interests, but over how to maximize their shared interests. And if my dad were here today, I think he would draw on the Camp David Accords for an important teachable moment for the present for all of us. In his big life, with a number of extraordinary moments, there were few who actually joined him from very early to the end. One of them was Madeline Albright. My father respected, admired, and most of all trusted Secretary Albright. He had been her professor at Columbia, had brought her to the NSC staff, and they remained close throughout his life. Madeline's impressive CV has been circulated, so I want to say something more personal about her relationship with my father. She and he shared certain attributes, an important one of which was that they were both immigrants from Central Europe, cast on America's shores by World <coughs> War II, and that experience shaped their worldview. By growing up and living elsewhere, by speaking foreign languages, they knew just a little bit more about the world, especially a part of the world that was the focal point of the Cold War. They also understood America. They felt it. They felt its dilemmas and challenges, and they knew what to do about it. My father is National Security Advisor, and Madeleine Albright as Secretary of State. My dad loved that Madeleine Albright was an outspoken Secretary of State, that was very much needed at the moment. And my father would frequently say that President Clinton was a beneficiary of her appointment because of her background. Let me close by saying that when people think of Zbigniew Brzezinski, they think of many things. A strategist, 
a teacher, a great father. I don't think, I don't, I don't think many people think of the word feminist when they think of him. But the truth is, is that he was a real advancer of women. Not because of their gender, but because he thought of them as leaders, as strategists, and perfect for the moment and for the challenges of our time. I could put out the names of a number of leading women in Washington whom he advanced, but none reached the heights of Madeleine Albright. He also advanced my, uh, uh, his wife, my mother, my sister, my wife, and urged them to think strategically and to achieve their dreams <coughs> while maintaining the tough balance of family life. I'm so happy that my nine-year-old daughter, Aurora, is here today, along with other members of the Brzezinski family, to hear from Secretary Albright. I think we, we will hear in her voice echoes of Chief. Mm -hmm.